On today's lesson on Dama, we are starting a big project that you're going to be working on until midnight Friday of week 10. It is your first assignment with me, and I'm going to try to make sure that you'll do a better job than half of the class submitting with your last teacher. Okay? So, you are doing a, an assignment that's to do with measurement. The draft is your midnight Friday of week 9. If you get me a draft by then, I will give you detailed feedback. If you know anyone from 10IG2, ask them what my feedback looks like. Ask them if that was a waste of time. I'm not going to bother giving you feedback or even your final, marking your work, if you don't get it into me on time. I'm just going to make that clear, and that's on recording now. My time is worth more than yours. Sorry. The final will be due midnight Friday before you go on the holidays. Okay? People not currently passing, show me a draft by the end of lesson three, Friday week eight, and I'll use that to help out your grade, okay? You should know if you're in that situation. So what I'd like to do, please, can you all please download the 2024 Summative of 10 Maths Measurement DI, that PDF, that's the task sheet that explains what you need to do. Question? What do you mean? That's an iPad, so if you open it, you press the share button and then you save it to files. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's look at the task sheet, please. So I will read out the task description. You will use mensuration. Now, that sounds very similar to another word that girls will be familiar with, but mensuration is measurement maths. And we're going to use it to investigate the relationship between the surface area of something, so the outside area, like my skin, versus volume ratio, which is how much space I take up, okay? As things increase in size. These objects will be used to model the shape of a baby, and analysing the results that you get will try to explain why babies are more vulnerable to hyperthermia <laughs> Does anyone know what hypothermia is? It's when you're super cold. So hypo is lack of, lack of heat. Hyperthermia is too much heat. So you'll notice if you actually watch the news, babies always die every summer because people forget them. They go and play the pokies and they leave them in the car and they die. There's a mathematical reason for it. We're only looking at the maths part, not any science. So your task is going to have this structure. You're going to have an intro. Write that after. Write that after you've done all the maths because then you'll be able to tell the reader what they're going to read about. This is the one that you should concentrate on, mathematical calculations. This is what I'm going to show you to start off with today. Analysis, I'll talk about that a little bit next week because looking at some of your assignments from semester one, some people did it well, some people just wrote something. Okay, I need to make sure you do this properly because all of you We'll be doing a maths assignment next year. It doesn't matter what level of maths you do. Discussion. This is the trickiest part. It's where you show your understanding of the assumptions and limitations behind the results. We'll talk about that again next week. And then you make a conclusion. The page limit is eight pages. You're allowed to use size 10 font as the smallest. If you find, because this maths assignment has a lot of repetitive calculations... If you're getting close to the page limit, there's something you can use called the appendices where you can put repetitive maths in the back of your assignment and it doesn't take up page space, all right? So you'll see that I've given you an example of someone's work um, from a few years ago. So yeah, what we're looking at is the surface area to volume ratio. So if you scroll down, that's the rubric that I'm going to mark you on. Here is some context that I researched about kids dying a lot of them dying in the United States, etc., and some research showing that the surface area to volume ratio is key to the survival of children in a locked car. Exposure of the surface area to the hot sun, because where are you getting heat through? Where's the heat going through? Your skin. That's your surface area. Your ability to fight the heat is the amount of water in your body. What determines that? Not your skin. It's how much space you take up, your volume. So what we're looking at is how the surface area to volume ratio changes when you start off small, like a baby, compared to adults that are bigger. So let's investigate that now with some 
maths. I'm just going to go over what the idea of surface area to volume ratio is. One of the key concepts in your measurement DI is the surface area to volume ratio. It compares the surface area to its volume by dividing. So surface area divided by the volume. Let's see what happens with this. Okay, I've done the maths here. But what did I work out the surface area to be for this small cube? What does it say, the surface area is? 24. 24. So it's going to be 24 divided by, what did I work out the volume was? 8. So 24 divided by 8 is going to be 3. That's the surface area to volume ratio at my OG cube, the smallest one. Now I've made it slightly bigger. I've made it double the size. Okay? What is... My maths tell you the surface area of that larger cube is 96. 96 divided by, what is the volume of it? I can't do that one in my head. 96 divided by 64. 1.5. What happened to the surface area to volume ratio? Did it stay the same? What, what words could you use to describe the ratio going from 3 to 1.5? It halved, okay? So what is, that, what is that number saying? When it got bigger, the amount of surface area, the amount of skin you have is a bit more than the amount of volume in your body. Let's take it to the third one, scale factor three. What is the surface area of the, the scale factor three cube there? 216 divided by, the volume is also 216. What's the scale factor going to be? What's happening, as you get bigger in size, what's happening to the comparison between the amount of skin you have compared to the volume? It's getting smaller. So what is this saying? If you're baby-sized, you've got heaps of skin versus body space. As you get bigger, your body space gets bigger in comparison to your skin. Does that mathematically sort of suggest why babies suffer from heat more? Because they've got heaps of skin for their body, all right? You're going to experience that and graph it. What is happening in the surface area to volume ratio as the objects get larger? It gets smaller. In the context of the human body, this means as you get bigger, your volume grows to match your surface area. That is the overall context of your assignment, but you need to write it in your own words, okay? Before I move on, I'll show you an exemplar that you'll be provided. Unlike what I've been described your previous teacher was, you were given an exemplar, the full thing, and just said, copy that. That's not teaching you anything, okay? What I've done is given you a hint of what each section is, but then I described in words what should be there. Because doesn't, doesn't that prevent you from just copying what the student wrote? All right? So your assignment, if you're going to do well, it's going to look somewhat like this. Please do not use this same shape. Okay? I know I'm going to upload this to your turn it in, so it'll pick up if you copied it. But in part one, you're going to do that scale factor one, scale factor two for one shape. Okay, and then what you'll do is you'll put the numbers into a table, those numbers that I got here, the 24 and 8, 96, 64, 216, 216, that's what you're putting in to the table, surface area volume, right, and then you work out the ratios. I've got a video that will help you with this, so don't worry about that, and then you'll graph it. Can you see what's happening to that ratio as you get bigger? It dips really fast. And then as you get bigger in size, does it still dip really fast? Sort of flattens out, doesn't it? So in the analysis part, you're just being up, talk about what you see in the graph, okay? In the context of the baby, okay? In part two, you're going to make your own baby design. Now, you're probably freaking out. You don't need to do it in 3D. Tinkercad, if you guys can use it, that's what these kids use to draw that. 
Next week, I'm going to do a literal art lesson here. I'll show you how to draw in 3D next week. I do not need it to be amazing. What I need is a picture of something vaguely baby-shaped, and I can see how wide and long things are. Does that make sense? And then you're going to do the same maths on that. Because if I show that the graph for the baby, does that look friggin' the same as the sphere? That looks the same shape as the sphere. Do you agree that this, this baby looks kind of dodgy? Yes. But what have we proven? If this graph for one sphere is exactly the same as this graph for a vaguely baby shape, does it matter how complicated the shape is? It doesn't. So we can argue this point for a real life baby, okay? And then later when I've got some time, here are some examples of assumptions and limitations, right? But that's it. Now, it to support you, because this might be the first time that you'll have a proper assignment to do without like getting a free ride at it. I literally did um, this video here is me doing all of part one in half an hour. Who is that for? That's not for the people that are already passing. That's for the people that need it to boost their grade. Okay? Because that's like ammo for me. <laughs> right? See how that works? So the only rule with this you're doing exactly the same thing as that, but if you use the same sphere as me, that it's not worth anything because you're just copying what I did. Use a different shape, okay? But also, even for the guys that don't need it to help their passing grade, just see what I did, okay? I'll show you how to type it in. Any questions about that process? You have until midnight of Friday, week 10, okay? For the actual assignment. Now, please, I don't know who I'm going to teach here next year, but the draft in my classes is useful for people. Ask anyone that you know in the Ignite class. I'll, it's, most of them were 2,000 words of feedback. If all you give me is a title, then my feedback will be actually do some work. If you tried to write some of the sections, can I comment on that better? Yeah, I can direct you what to do better, yeah? So... Do as much as you can. This is all you're doing for the next couple of weeks. The only people that need to sort of get a kick up the bum and work a bit faster is the ones that I need to see what they've done. End of lesson three next week. I want their part one to be done and your baby design decided. I think that's a reasonable amount of work to do. If you're not sitting around chatting. Yeah. I'll stop the recording there.